<laughs> I just want to say it's problem. I never said I was the perfect mother. <laughs> Either what, uh, what are your car opinions for 24 hours of swarm? Like what what car Porsche. are we going? Porsche. Porsche. Yeah, no, that's the Porsche. Then you fucking Ready. buy it then. <laughs> <laughs> This is the car, this is the track, this is a picture of me right there, and this is my friend Tajay Robertson, just a couple of sim racers. Anyway, 18 laps of Red Bull Ring, at the front of the pack we have Prody Kotsketsky, I don't know how to say his last name, Australian driver, Brock Feeney, another Australian driver, and then just to make it super unfair, Tajay Robertson is in here with us. So we are up against the God Squad at the front of the pack. We qualified pretty poorly, we are down there, and I think that is P8 as car number five with a 33.2. Upon trying to start the race, my mouse disappeared and I couldn't figure out what was going on. I got stuck in this like camera thing, which is a cool camera to be fair, but I just couldn't move my mouse anywhere. So if anybody knows what's happening, uh, comment down below and let me know what I can do to fix this next time. Cause I just, after restarting it, uh, we're gonna get right underway with the race, starting in P8. We've got Skander ahead of us, Mark behind us. Skander gets a pretty good launch there, just about looking like he's going to end up sending it uh, at least too wide with this guy. Tajay takes a conservative line for the car in front of him, backs up. We end up up the inside of car number eight, so we're actually drive we are competing with him for P7 at the moment. We have the inside, which at the end of the straight, if you have the inside, you have a decently, decently high likelihood of uh, maintaining the inside through this corner and through the next one, which hopefully at some point you will get the position. Uh, Adam, car number eight, actually backs out there, so he lets us through. And oftentimes when that happens, you accidentally let someone else through, which sure enough he does. This is Austin Ward, car number 11, who we've been racing with all week. So um, we've, we, we've had a lot of close racing with him, and once again, we find ourselves just in front of him. Uh, the cars ahead of us going side by side. I'm taking a semi-defensive line into this corner because this is a very good overtaking opportunity. It looks like Tajay is going to drop that position, end up tucking behind Skander, and you would think that he would be stuck behind Skander for at least the rest of the lap as that was really the best overtaking opportunity. Well, both of those last two corners were the best overtaking opportunities, and he is now behind him. However, coming through the downhill left-hander, I think this is corner seven, he is going to get a really, really good run out, superior to Skander, and looking ahead, it looks like he is tucking to the inside. Is he going to be alongside? Just barely. It's a very risky move to send it up the inside there, and he is not willing to take that risk on lap one. I don't blame him. I have seen Tajay bite the dust lap one in like two or three races this week, and one of the ones that he didn't bite the dust in, he ended up uh, running out of fuel, so he actually had to go to the pits. Um, with no fuel after lap ones. I'm excited to see him drive around onto lap two. I think this is my first time seeing him drive around onto lap two this week, and we drove with him quite a lot this week. Up at the front of the pack, we have Brock, who is sitting behind Brody at the moment, getting right up on his tail. The two Australian uh, supercar drivers, I believe they are. Car number four gifted a position by car number nine, who gets a bit of overseer coming out of corner three, ends up tucking behind him, and you can see car number four taking an extremely, extremely defensive line there. As all of that was going down, we were getting right up behind Tajay, and I mean right up behind Tajay, so the gap between us is now two tenths, and that should open up an opportunity for me into this next corner. It uh, looks like there's some fighting going on behind as well. So they're kind of dropping off about a second to Mark Gomez, who's been fighting his way to uh, stay with us. And this is Gomez on the inside of Austin Ward heading into corner four. You can make this work around the outside, or it's not that you make it work necessarily, but you can at least stay side by side. Austin doesn't manage to get it done. So Mark is now behind us and uh, Mark is very fast. So I'm hoping that I can get past Tajay or that maybe me and Tajay just hit a stride along with Skander, who's right in front and we are able to pull away from Gomez. I just I, I want to stay away from Gomez. He's a he's a he's a fairly fast driver, and I know that he is willing to have a battle. So only four tenths to Skander at the moment, and then there's about a second up the road to P4. Skander's in P5. 
we are in P7, so we are, have so far netted positive one position since our start of the race, and we don't get the best line through that final corner. We lose a bit of time to uh, Tajay, who gets a fantastic run through there. The, the situation to Mark is similar, and it looks like Scanner's going to take a defensive line into the first corner. Tajay looking to make a move around the outside. I think that the outside is more beneficial through there. You can get a much better, you can get maintain much higher speed, uh, but Tajay goes a bit deep there, I think, trying to maintain too much speed, allowing a lot of space mid-corner that didn't necessarily need to be there. Brock has found his way almost around um, Brody as he goes around the outside into corner three. Brody takes a super, super tight line there, which you are really forced to do as the inside car to uh, make up for the speed that you're going to lose, and they are headed side by side. The cars look very slow from that camera angle. Brock just about getting a full car ahead, not quite. Brody is still there, and he is on the inside. If there ever was a situation to go around the outside, that might have been it, but Brock is going to look for a switchback instead. He gets a significantly better run. He does lose out on the mid corner, but this fight is not over. Brock looking up the inside of corner number six from, I mean, his, their bumper to bumper, front bumper to rear bumper at that point, side by side, and he's going to maintain it. Actually, fully gets alongside here, heading into corner seven. Car number one, Brody, should have the advantage here. You get a much better run. You have more space out there, and Brody is going to get the power down. It straightens out quicker for him, so it's honestly not as much of a turn for him, and he maintains the lead there. Meanwhile, our little group back here is still doing our thing. We have Mark now 0.2 seconds behind us, 0.1 seconds behind us. So the group three has now turned into a group of four, and as we make the final corner here, crossing the line onto lap number four, between the four of us, there is about half of a second, about six tenths of a second between the four of us. So there is a lot of opportunity here to go forward or backwards for us, trying to maintain as high minimum speed as possible. It should yield us a good run, and I think our run was superior to Tajay there. We also have the slipstream. He does have the slipstream from Skander as well, but we are closer to Tajay, which just puts us in a better position to make a move. He's going to stay on the outside. We move to the inside just before the braking zone, braking as lightly as we can until we meet that apex, trying to meet it solidly, and it looks like Skander slides out a little bit as well, actually ends up holding Tajay back, so Mark and myself both go through there into uh, P5 for myself and P6 for Mark, and T Tajay now finds himself in P8. Under threat from car number eight, looking to go up the inside of corner four. He's going to fully get a alongside. Meanwhile, I drive into the dirt, completely losing traction. I gather it up and manage to avoid spinning, but that is going to allow Mark to slide ahead of us and we're going to send it side by side with him through here, through corner number six. It's very weird as the inside car here. You almost have to shift down an extra gear. We do slightly get ahead of him heading into corner seven, break a little bit earlier as we take that tighter line. He has more space, and as we've said, the, the corner kind of straightens out for him first. We maintain track position ahead of him, but just barely. We are side by side, so we're still fighting for P5 at the moment. Coming into the penultimate corner, very, very risky one, as I said earlier, to uh, take too wide. We're go going to do it anyways. I drive way too wide, lose a bit of traction, get totally lost in my gearing there and mark goes through as we make the final corner so i am behind him skander is directly behind us 0.2 seconds behind us adam is on his tail tajay is on his tail within seven tenths we now have five cars so we are all over each other three quarters of a second between all five of us through corner one i want to stay attached to mark hopefully detach myself from skander i don't know what happened there but i did they are now side by side behind me that is skander and adam Wright, i believe or no excuse me that's skander and tajay he is back so he is on the out side of Skander. Don't know how that happened. Into the breaking zone. They get very close. They they touch and Tajay is backwards. Almost hits us. And I think Skander actually ended up going off there as well. So here's the view of how, how close he got to us. And you can see Skander, yeah, driving the opposite direction right behind our bumper. That was absolutely terrifying. I was screaming in the chat when I saw that. Almost drive into Mark Gomez as I see that coming and try and push my car forward with very little space available. So Adam now behind us. He is the next car behind us with two seconds. Mark is 0.3 seconds up the road potential for a move uh sometime soon with that type of gap as we go through corner number four mark goes deep i try and squeeze up the inside too much throttle too much steering oh my god dude fuck me okay so yeah i lose like four positions there i think five positions i'm into p10 and look look who's behind us it's <laughs> it's taj robertson he's back so um we fell down together, and he is, I mean, he's significantly behind us at this point. I think he's almost, like, probably seven or eight tenths behind us. Flipping ahead to lap number seven, and the situation, I mean, 
as I continue to drive in this situation, I realize what my situation is. That situation being that the cars ahead of me, I don't think are totally on pace with uh, like my fastest laps. So I think that we have some opportunity here to move forward. Car number seven, looking to go around the outside of the, I almost want to say that's like a starry car, just based on the colors, I'm not quite sure. Looks for a switchback instead, and doesn't get the, doesn't really get underneath him, but he does achieve a very good run, which will give him an opportunity into corner four, uh, either around the outside or around the inside. It looks like the inside is being defended. He moves over at the last second to take a semi-defensive line. Seven squeezes his car up there, ends up slightly oversteering. They make a little bit of contact, nothing too dramatic. Car number 18 is down a position, and uh, all of that fighting did lose them quite a bit of time on board with myself, and you can see just how close we are to them now. Only one second to car uh, to, to P7, which is actually car number seven, Magnus Asp, hoping that we can make some sort of crazy run and get ourselves up there before the end of this race. Still sitting in P10, but we have these three guys right ahead of us. A lot, a lot of opportunity. Tajay is beginning to catch up as I, I am realizing I need to make a move around car number 13 soon. He's kind of been holding us back a bit, and we haven't really been too much on the offensive, just trying to settle our car down, settle back into the rhythm, and let our car tires cool off after that massive slide that we had. Crossing the line onto lap number eight, and within about one and a half seconds, we have four cars once again, with Tajay being the one at the rear and uh, Magnus being the one at the front. Actually, five cars there, son of a gun. Yeah, we have a, so a lot of opportunity here once again to move forwards or move backwards. More opportunity to, loop, to move forward, though, which is what I love to see. We achieve a very, very good run through corner number one. 13 here is at a pretty big speed deficit. I move over to the inside early on, and he doesn't really do anything about that, so he's going to stay wide. I am pretty aggressive with my line here through there, kind of pushing him even wider to try and achieve the best run that I can for myself, and it works out in the sense that Tajay is not able to surpass car number 13 either, so he is now separated from myself by car number 13. Up into P9, looking to hopefully make something happen here with car number 18 ahead of us, Joseph Hernandez, number Number three who's been moving down a little bit there is a decent gap ahead of magnus about three seconds between magnus and car number or p6 who is adam wright who is also a very fast driver so i'm not sure that we will be able to close that gap and get past these guys unless they were to just like take each other out somehow on board with tajay through corner one and car number 13 similar to uh what happened to me he is not going to get a fantastic run. He doesn't have the slipstream here either. Tajay moving to the inside extremely early. The two at the front battling as they head into corner number three. 18 looking to make a move around the outside. Car number seven slowing down early to uh, maintain that inside line as they come around the corner. 18 just drives directly into car number seven and we scoop both of those positions. I think what happened is car number 18, yeah, just a little bit of oversteer and kind of slides into this guy, punts him, and then yeah, he's off. So we are out of the motherfucking gates, baby, slinging down the straight. We have uh, Tajay still behind us, but uh, about half of a second, and he does have another driver, Harold, directly on his heels. Harold is car number 13, and he didn't seem like he wanted to defend that much, so I'm going to assume that he doesn't want to attack that much, and through that one corner alone, Harold drops off a couple of tenths of Tajay. And I understand that, yeah, by lap number 11, Harold is basically gone, so Tajay is chasing me down. We have managed to keep him at that half a second gap. Adam, right, it's currently about five seconds to Adam. So if we could put in some solid laps here, I think that we have an opportunity to uh, catch up to him. He's running 33s, as am I. Through corner number three. Ah, damn it, dude. Slid out <laughs> again. I shifted down to first too early. A, like, lethal mistake. It will kill you. And uh, yeah, so my revs go too high. My back tires spin, and I go out. We have Tajay on the inside of us heading into corner four terrible terrible place to be for me i try and go deep around the outside cut in as early as i can allowing him space and trying to build up my throttle while keeping my minimum speed high but it just doesn't quite work for me it is possible to go up the inside tajay does a, honestly a really really good defensive move there you can see my steering i was looking at going up the inside and he must have felt that moves over to the inside totally cutting that off so we are behind tajay now um, only 0.4 seconds behind Tajay, and he goes extremely wide through corner number seven. So that may give us an opportunity to fight directly back for this position. Up the inside of the penultimate corner, risky, but uh, somebody did this to us earlier. We're going to try it on Tajay, and I think we were we turn in way too early there and slow down a bit too much. Just about side by side as we head through the final corner, but he has the outside able to open up his steering a lot more as it is an extremely fast corner. And uh, yeah, we're not really able to hold that one so much. So tucking behind him, only 0.1 seconds behind. 
We also have pressure behind us from car number 13, so we do need a solid run through this first corner. We will have the slipstream of Tajay, which is good. It should help us defend that. And Tajay has no slipstream ahead of him, so in terms of attacking, we're in a pretty good spot here as well. Still directly on his bumper. We definitely, the slipstream is kicking in right now. We move to the inside through corner three. This is probably your best overtaking opportunity on the entire track. He does really, really well there to uh, break as little as possible originally, letting his car get deeper earlier, making that corner earlier, and uh, getting the throttle down earlier, essentially just going faster through there. So we are still behind him, and I don't know why for the life of me I don't make a move up the inside here. <laughs> I end up almost driving into the back of him and having to avoid him. Ah, oh, God. It, watching these these races back recently we end up losing a position as well from that watching these races back has made me realize just how unaggressive I've been recently and that is something I vow to change um, in the coming weeks in the next videos I promise I'm gonna be more aggressive with my offensive racing and with my defensive racing I will fight more I, I, I feel like for whatever reason I've settled into this place where I feel comfortable and it's not good it's um I think that it is killing killing a bit of my my growth and op like potential to grow in racing. Either way, we are where we are. Lesson learned. Behind car number 13, once again, Harold. And uh, we're going to get a good run out of the final corner there, putting ourselves right on his tail. We are now a second to Tajay Robertson. So I, I think we definitely have some work to do, even once we get around Harold. Backing off into the first corner, the inside of the first corner, it just hurts both of you. And as the overtaking car, you a lot of times you don't actually get that position. So we, we're going to tuck behind him there, just make the safe move at the end of the straight, coming into corner number three. We have the slipstream. Uh, he's led us through before, and he's going to do it again. He just stays on the outside, lets us go up the inside, breaking later and um, achieving the apex much, much earlier, which should keep us safe here, at least keep us on the inside into the next corner, which we should be able to fight. It does look like 13 is putting up a bit more of a fight this time than he did the the initial overtake that we had on him. So breaking before the 100 there, down to second gear, tucking on the inside, using just a little bit of that curve and not really allowing him to get any sort of undercut there. We are safely back into P8 where we started this race. Tajay is now a second and a half up the road from us. We definitely have some work to do here. About five and a half laps of uh, work ahead of us, which I'm down for. I think I did get slightly complacent for a few of those laps and I didn't really push. I just kind of let myself be behind Tajay and see what would happen in terms of the time between us. We do get a better run than him through there, closing that gap to about a second. And the gap would, honestly, it would kind of stay there for a few laps. So skipping ahead to lap number 17, this is the penultimate lap. And for whatever reason, I always feel like I have all the time in the world until I get to the penultimate lap. And then I'm like, oh shit, okay, I gotta start hustling. Uh, which is better than doing it on the final lap, I guess. 0.8 seconds to Tajay, so we haven't really made any progress in the last three laps. But it's time for that to change right now, getting a better run than Tajay through corner one, actually taking an off track, which can help you carry a little bit of speed through there. So it is a strategic off track, closing up the gap through corner number three, all of the way down momentarily to two tenths. It's gonna open back up as he gets a better exit than us through there. And I mean, that's kind of how corners go. You kind of slinky through the corners. So we are now within half of a second to Tajay with one lap after this one to go. And it's really one of these two corners, corner three or corner four, which we are going through right now, where I want to make that move on the next lap. So that is my focus. Everything about my driving right now is oriented around the fact that I want to get a good run through, tw through turn one on the final lap and look at potentially a move into corner three. If we don't get it done there, at least get good enough of a run that we can continue that move through corner number four. And that is, uh, that's basically the game plan right now. The gap slight, ever so slightly closing here within three tenths of him, um, which is the perfect place. If I can be within two tenths of him, by the time we come out of the first corner, I think that our plan should be able to be executed. I was definitely too heavy on the brakes there through the penultimate corner, dropping a bit of time to him, but we just about gained it back through the final corner, and we are in the slipstream. As we cross onto the final lap, the gap is looking perfect here. It is imperative that we have a good run through this corner. Keeping the speed high, taking just a little bit of this inside curb and over the outside curb, actually getting an off track there, but like I said before, it's okay, it's strategic. We are exactly where we need to be. Tajay knows that. He's kind of moving to avoid the slipstream. I'm not super aggressively trying to chase it down. He tucks to the out to the inside, which I figured he would. I attempt to go around the outside 
and it's a shit poor attempt. It's a really, really bad attempt. I go way too deep. By the time I get the car turned around, he's already on the throttle and dusting me out of there. So four tenths to him now. If there is potential for a move, it's going to be basically based on uh, the fact that he messes something up here. And through the penultimate corner, I don't think it's possible to close this gap up. Yeah, I, I was kind of looking up there, but really just hoping that I could force him into a mistake there. And we are going to cross the line. We are swerving around just for fucks. Um, me and Tajay, I, I feel like we have a good relationship. P8 for us. Crossing the line in P8. And uh, that is going to be the end of that race. Great race to Tajay. Took advantage of that beautifully. Did everything he needed to do. Here are the results. We ended up losing four I rating. So not really losing anything. I'm fine with that. Our safety rating though. Jesus. Minus 0.65. A lot of safety rating down so we are tanking in the safety rating department brody and brock won congratulations guys into the next race we are uh gonna cover well we're actually not really gonna cover the qualifying i'm just gonna show you the fact that i crossed the line with a 32.6 which was a pretty decent lap it put us what is this p5 i believe for starting position behind josh silcock muhammad at the front dude what the fuck 31.7, 31.97, I did a 32.6, that guy is crazy fast, I think he's like a top, like, he's in the, he's on the podium for the fastest lap time at Red Bull Ring, um, car number seven getting a really good launch, sending it three wide with myself and car number five, both of them going to go up the inside of me here, car number 16 sliding out, and, uh, it looks like that may be the death of not only, well, okay, he got hit, and then he gets hit again, and then car number 13 gets baby driver parents into him, also collects this guy in the Falcon livery, so a couple of deaths back there, but we were not involved. Luckily, we are following behind these two guys who both jumped us on the start. So we are down into P7, already down two positions. We have um, car number five looking to make a move up the inside. Almost looking up the inside, but before we go any further, please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell if my girlfriend makes the octopus in the bucket. We have to throw the octopus into the bucket. She's got the octopus. She's gonna throw it over the roof into the bucket. That's the plan. If she makes it, you have to like and subscribe. Oh my gosh, that was not even close. <laughs> she doesn't want to see me succeed, bro. She's doing that on purpose. So we are almost up the inside, end up settling behind car number five here, who is side by side with car number seven. Looks like he gets a really, really good run through there. Actually on the inside, able to get a uh, better run than the car on the outside. I think car number seven, Kind of messed up his run there as he was trying to block me off at the same time so, that, so there was a lot at play there i'm gonna almost follow behind car number five but man they break way fucking later than me uh had i broke a little bit later i probably could have taken that position but car number seven does very well to slide back into that train disallowing me to overtake him so all of that fighting now has put us i mean we're 2.6 seconds off of p4 in our little group of three here josh at the back of that group at the front and uh, I don't know, Muhammad, dude, he's flying away already. Meanwhile, my little group here is, uh, I mean, the battle's about to get raging through the penultimate corner, and we're following Will, Dong in P, number, in P5, going through at the front, sends it through a little bit too hot, as he tries to keep it on track, it slightly gets oversteer, turns into snap oversteer with the correction, and he slides out, so we take that position up into P6 now, only three seconds to Josh Silcock, so I think that that is a real possibility, uh, Will is fast, I, I know Will is a fast driver, um, I like to think that I'm a fast driver as well, hopefully we can make something happen here, and, uh, work together to catch these guys, potentially three seconds up the road and it looks like dolly is only 3.5 seconds up the road from or uh, half a second up the road from josh so if they were to get into a fight which is possible that could help bring them back to us at this point they're actually kind of pulling away from us now so i'm not feeling super confident anymore in being able to catch them lap two did not go as planned they have pulled away by about half of a second each from us and both of us driving off the track right there i mean i feel like i i may drive off the track more than will robinson does here but i don't get a penalty for that he does so i'm following him through i thought i was just following his slipstream but he's actually moving over to slow down because he had to serve a slowdown penalty i no longer have the usage of slipstream available to me and dong isn't gonna have mine for long as he sends it very deep through corner one i think he was his speed got messed up because he had that slowdown so his braking marker was probably also sorts out of whack and stuff only three seconds up the road to josh who is now 
right behind Dolly. It looks like that that is going to turn into a battle if it hasn't already been a battle at this point. They are definitely falling back and losing time constantly to me. I have clean air. I'm able to run just like my flawless sound barrier breaking laps. The situation ahead is interesting. Josh, very fast. Dolly, very fast. Leo, very fast. He's the guy from the last video, but I think that the two behind him are faster. And if you saw the last video, you know that Leo Duncan defends like a motherfucking lion. He had damage and he held back like a group of six people for like five laps. I am completely whiffing the apex as, as uh, I go over that. My lap times are not looking on par with everybody else's. Everybody else is driving 32 sevens. Um, my last lap was a 33 four. So if I am gonna catch, I'm going to definitely need to settle into my pace a bit more. This is my first lap with clean air. So I'm hoping that potentially um, it, it yields a better time and spoiler, it did and they do. I start running 32s, which is great. Dolly is running a 32-1. Leo's running a 32-8 or a 32-6, which is slower than a 32-1, which means that Dolly is going to catch him. He is only three tenths away from him. And uh, like I said, Leo will defend literally to the death, to somebody's death, his death or your death. Somebody will die with his defense. Um, it's very, very, very persistent. And Dolly is about to find that out, uh, I believe. I am assuming he's about to find that out. He's right behind him, heading down to corner four. He's got a decent gap at this point. I don't think he's going to go for a move here. Leo is already taking a semi-defensive line uh, from that distance back, which, you know, potentially is a good thing. You can make a huge dive from that situation. But just seeing that, um, they're going to be losing time from from even even that like semi defense is going to lose them time so i'm watching my relative i know that these guys are fighting and that it is that it should eventually open something up for me this is lap number seven and down into corner three still got that slipstream uh dolly does from leo through a corner number three he it's probably a better run there. It looked like a better run from the outside perspective. He does have the slipstream as well, so that's going to help him out. Leo immediately moving over to take the defensive line, taking a semi-defensive line here, not using that curb, and Dolly is not going to do anything for it yet. Leo going deep through corner number four, but honestly maintaining his speed really well, actually pulling away from Dolly slightly through there. So they're still putting in really good laps, 32 sixes. Um, they're, I mean, they're running like mid 32s while right behind each other but that is all about to change as the battle is about to be cracked wide open dolly getting right behind him through corner number three getting a better i mean a later apex there not necessarily always giving you a better run but in this instance i think it does and leo does not defend this one the closest dolly has been leo does not defend it so dolly is up the inside now side by side through corner number four leo is managing to make it work around the outside he is sufficiently alongside basically side by side the entire cars they drive into each other here that one was probably more on dolly and dolly sending it up around the outside and yeah he locks up his tires i think uh he, his car was still unsettled from that so Honestly, not even like that strong of defense. I mean, the holding it around the outside was fantastic racing from Leo there, but he wasn't defending the way that I thought he was going to. I think that was more a mistake on Dolly's part, which is good for me because now Dolly is right ahead of me. So I have the slipstream of Dolly, who is arguably the second fastest driver in this lobby, with Muhammad being the first one, and he is absolutely dusted. He's eight seconds ahead of Leo already on halfway through the race, which is just absolutely absurd. We know we have some time here still, only, but like I just said, only halfway through the race, we're only half of a second behind Dolly, and if we can remain in his slipstream, I think it's possible that we could catch Josh. Josh is not that far behind Leo either, so in the event that Josh catches Leo, that's only going to help us. He's about a second behind him at the moment, potentially getting a little bit of slipstream right now from him, and in the future, maybe looking to make a move. For, uh, for P2, they are both on the podium, and I feel like podium sitters, especially P3 and P2, they're not going to fight a ton, um, usually until the last lap or so. Getting right up behind Dolly momentarily through corner number three, three tenths behind him. We have about half of a second to Will Robinson behind us, who hasn't gone anywhere. He's been riding right behind us ever since we got around him, and we are really needing to just settle into our pace right now. We haven't quite been on our typical pace. Uh, we, we've had some races in the past where we've run consistent low 32s, and this race, our best has been, I think, like 32-6-ish, and we're currently running high 32s. So I want to focus on, I'm kind of watching Dolly. He turns in a bit earlier than me there, and I think that is something that I do end up implementing in my driving a little bit. 
similar lines through there, avoiding that inside curve, which allows you to get on the throttle earlier without worrying about um, you know the car getting unsettled and then potentially sliding out or even just scrubbing too much uh, can lose you a bit of time there as it's kind of like a straight through the penultimate corner. I'm slowing down too much. I've been slowing down too much through there this entire race. And I think that was honestly my main problem. I lose almost two tenths to dolly through there. I make it up through that final corner, but it's just something I wanted to be conscious of and keep tabs on. Skipping ahead to lap number 13, and we're still right behind Dolly. We've dropped Will a bit at this point. We've also caught Josh and Leo, who, well, we've caught Josh. Leo is still four seconds up the road, but uh, Josh has fallen down to about two seconds ahead of us. So we have high potential, I would say, at this point. We have five laps left to catch Josh, and we are right behind Dolly, so we are soaking up the slipstream majorly. I don't wants to go for a move on him right now and I get a lot closer to him through here than I would like because I don't want to put pressure on him. I don't want him to defend. I don't want him to do anything but drive his fastest line. I honestly believe I have a better chance of getting around Josh than I do of getting around Dolly at this point. I think it, it would just be smarter for us to catch Josh and then try and make a move there. If we get slightly later, I mean by lap 15 if we haven't caught Josh significantly then I'm gonna start looking for a move on Dolly and let me know what you think about that strategy you know maybe that's not the best maybe I should just be looking to get around Dolly this is a sprint race but um yeah that that was that was my thoughts at the moment so still two seconds to Josh as we come through the final corner Dolly driving pretty significantly off the track there and it is going to give him a slowdown so that whole strategy is just dead there goes Dolly he's behind us now by about a second and uh we're catching Josh at the same time five laps left to go including this one really hoping that I can make up some sort of major time here soon to Josh because without slipstream I think Dolly is a faster driver than me I did put in a 32-1 on that last lap so we're, we're starting to get back to our pace but Dolly I want to say is more consistent than me if, if nothing else he's definitely more consistently fast than me uh, maybe I can put in a fast lap every now and then but he, as you see I'm driving literally off of the track on the very on lap 14 so I just got ahead of Dolly and then I drive into the dirt that is going to close up that gap pretty significantly as well as open up about two laps worth of work done uh, towards catching Josh and when that happened my mind honestly switched from the let's get Josh to let's not die to Dolly. So I went into the defensive mindset at that point and I feel like I stopped pushing quite as much, which it, it's so weird. Once you get into that defensive mindset, once you start worrying about the person behind you, you actually start going slower, or at least I feel that you start going slower. So 0.6 seconds to Dolly. We're still catching Josh, but it's not, I mean, this is the last lap. We don't have enough time to close up a two second gap unless his car explodes. And that I don't know if that's in this game right now. So Dolly is soaking up our slipstream extremely heavily. I have to have a good run through here. Have to have a good run through here. Do not shift down to first too early. It will kill you. It killed me in the past and it will kill me again if I allow it to. We actually do get a really good run through there, separating ourselves from Dolly by about a tenth. We are flinging this motherfucking car through these corners right now. Heading into corner four, breaking after the 150, before the 100. Those are the two numbers that the boards are on, that there's not a number of a board between them, so we're breaking between those. Breaking at 125 would probably be a better way to say that. And uh, not really any more overtaking opportunities past that for Dolly. So we actually keep that gap. Closing up the gap to Josh really significantly. He didn't have the greatest final lap. Got it almost down to about a second, and we crossed the line in P4. So not quite able to get a podium, but we do net positive one position. And honestly, I would say that for me, that's better than graduating college. Let's check on the results. Ba bam, baby, we gained a decent amount of I rating, 35 I rating. Uh, Dolly actually lost seven for coming in P5, which is crazy. I guess he's almost 6K, so that makes sense. Once again, safety rating just continues to decline, rolling down a hill. Look at the incident points. I am the only person in the top five to exceed 10. I'm the only person in the top five to exceed two. If you guys want to support me and enjoy this video, please, please check out my channel and some other videos there, and I will see you guys in the future.